franchise fatigue. <laughs> Bruh. 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 What's up, Raiders? It's your boy, the Groovinator, and stop me if you've heard this one. Franchise fatigue. Fran franchise fatigue. All right? I, I swear to God, I've heard this one before. Are Dark Phoenix and Men in Black International proof that franchise fatigue is real? Well, let's see what... Uh, I don't even know what this website is called. I'm not going to... 411 Mania? 411 Mania? I don't know. Movies, wrestling, games, MMA. Okay, so uh, anyways, um, movies and TV. Are Dark Phoenix and Men in Black International proof that franchise fatigue is real? Uh, if you hang around long enough and read enough reports on box office results, you'll find the word fatigue is used to excuse any bad performance. This is true. Movies are never bad. There, if a movie fails at the box office, everybody just kind of circles and, and the spin doctors come out of the cracks in the sidewalk to make an excuse as to why a movie failed. But let's face it, folks, this summer, despite the movies that I have enjoyed, it's it's really bad right now. We're in a bad way. I mean, there's there's a lot of of sequels and prequels and reboots that are coming out right now as we speak, as this video is being made, that are just not good, okay? So um, this weekend was the perfect storm of bad results as Men in Black International and Shaft didn't bring out the audiences to theaters, not even meeting very conservative targets. Well, Hollywood, are you even trying, okay? Because from what I've heard from the reviews of both of those movies... Those are very bad, by committee, woke reboots, okay? So, not to mention, X-Men Dark Phoenix took a mighty dive in its second week, dropping a jaw-dropping 83% on Friday. How much is fatigue a factor when you look at the actual quality of movies out there? Thank you, article from 411 Mania. Uh, that's not to say fatigue isn't real. Audiences can tire of something at the drop of a hat. And move on to the next thing with ease. With While superhero movies have been a mainly profitable venture in time, that will pass. It always has. This is true, all right? And this is uh, something that I think after Endgame is going to run on fumes until it has absolutely no box office draw whatsoever. Um, Captain Meh. <laughs> I hear me, Pete. I'm, I'm quoting Pete from... Uh, from uh, uh, the place to be movies. He calls her Captain Meh. And it makes me laugh every time he says it. But uh, Captain Marvel is not going to be that box office draw that's going to drive the MCU into the next future. The best parts of it, I think, are over. All right? I hate to be negative like that, but I'm calling it like I see it. Looking at this past weekend, Men in Black International was expected to pull in a modest $30 million or so. They actually projected $40 million. Or so, but finished with 28.5 million. So it was expected to pull in three, but it made five million less. So, oh my god! Wait, no, I can't even do maths right now. 2.5 million. Not good when you remember the first three MIB all opened with over 50 million. Well, that's a point, okay? The MIB is a popular brand with many expecting nostalgia and curiosity to sell some tickets. Well, the thing is with Men in Black is. It came out at the tail end of the 90s, and there was still enough nostalgia left over from that to go into the middle of the next, uh, sorry, I had an unexpected phone call, the end of the next um, uh, millennium or decade, I should say, all right? So in the late 90s, and then you had Men in Black 2, which is, pfft, I, I don't like Men in Black 2. Men in Black 3 was okay because I liked um, Will, the fact that Will Smith was still funny and... I liked Josh Brolin playing a younger uh, Agent K. That was that was cool. Okay, that that's what carried the movie. The rest of the movie was kind of pfft, lousy plot. But anyway, um, with many expecting Sally Security to sell some tickets, while Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth are no Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, the pairing was seen as likable enough to bring in a more solid opening stateside. At this point, eyes will be on the overseas market to buoy the movie. As far as another chapter with these two, don't get your hopes up. MIB currently sits at 24% on Rotten Tomatoes and earned a B Cinema score. 
While not in the same category, we go another Shaft starring Samuel L. Jackson this weekend. The movie flopped hard with $8.3 million, which is less than half of what the box office and analysts predicted the follow-up would bring in. The budget for the movie was $35 million. For those that forgot, 2000 Shaft opened with $21.7 million. Yes, I went and saw Shaft in the theaters. I enjoyed that movie, and I am a fan of the original Shaft as well. And I thought that the, the Samuel L. Jackson reboot was cool. But um, all three movies have the same name. It's it's really, it when you see that, it just really reeks of oh my god, they're so desperate. You know what I mean? And ah, there was no marketing push at all whatsoever behind Shaft. I didn't even know it was out until I saw reviews of it. I'm like, oh, there's another Shaft movie. What are they calling it? Shaft. Well, of course, names are hard. We can't ha- come up with anything original. It can't be Shaft's Big Hairy Balls or, or Shaft the the next chapter or the next generation. It just has to be called Shaft. So what's the deal? Were, were these two destined to fail at the box office because of fatigue? Or was it the case of the studios missing the mark on what audiences wanted to see? For me, MIB International didn't excite me. I liked the two leads, but it looked more of the same, and I couldn't could just as easily stay home and watch one of the first three in the comfort of my couch. Nothing in the trailer looked like they pushed the concept in fun or different places, and I'm content to watch it when it streams somewhere. I've always been a fan of Shaft and really enjoyed the 2000s update to the character. Honestly, I didn't see one trailer for the movie, and it wasn't until I was scanning box office expectations that I saw it coming out this weekend. I caught up with the trailer, and again, nothing grabbed me. Franchise fatigue? Only if you count the lack of new ideas as fatigue in regards to the studio. Look at the buzz with Toy Story 4 and Spider-Man Far From Home as prime examples of franchises that still have life to them. No comment on Star Wars Episode Nine. Um, yeah, uh... So, what I wanted to address, though, was, um, woke reboots. And, uh... Never mind the fact that literally everything that comes out is a prequel, a sequel, or a reboot. It has to be a woke reboot because the younger kids like that sort of um, uh, push, that that, that push on identity politics. They... They are enjoying these things, and they like they like watching these arguments online. I think a lot of these movies are designed just to start arguments online. It's designed to make you take a side of the culture war, and that kind of sucks, okay? Uh, you look at uh, Men in Black, and, and like I mentioned in another video, um, I saw an extended trailer for it when I was at uh, Godzilla, and basically, I remember seeing a trailer and you see Chris Hemsworth, he's kind of yelling at the camera. They don't really show you who he's yelling at. He's just like, hey, freeze, we're the men in black. And then Tessa Thompson just kind of gives him a glaring look like, and he goes, sorry, the men and women in black. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> actually, that's not what I did. I said, F you in the theater. Because you know what? F Gary Gray. He's the director. F him. F Gary Gray for, for making such a drab, lifeless, designed by committee sequel that excites nobody. I like F Gary Gray. I don't think anybody here didn't like Friday or uh, Straight Out of Compton. Those movies were fantastic. But Men in Black, <laughs> you know, Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth were already in Thor Ragnarok. They already had chemistry in that. Why would you just take somebody out of one franchise? shove them into another franchise and say, okay, do your thing. Uh, roll them. Action. You know, it, it, it's just feels lazy. Everything about it feels lazy. Dark Phoenix, it feels lazy. It, it's, it's, it's X3. It's X3 last stand again. It's the same freaking story. It doesn't even look like it's shot all that well. Like the colors and everything that are used in the, in the shots. They're boring. They, the, the trailer puts me to sleep. Why would I want to go waste money seeing that? As I've whined in many of my videos before, I don't live close to theaters, and movies are expensive. I'm not getting press passes to go see this stuff. I have to be selective of what I see. It's something, usually I'll go see something if I think I can write a good article on it, or a review, or make a nice video for my channel for you fine folks that are watching me right now. But otherwise, eh, you know. So, woke reboots, I would like to present... A contest okay for all the people watching this video I would like for you to design a woke reboot uh, I'm gonna use a really bad example but I want to mean what okay you have to think in terms of Hollywood stupid when you're inventing a woke reboot think of 
an independent property or a franchise or a TV show that hasn't seen any action in a long time. You have to reboot it, but you have to think like Hollywood stupid, like you're trying to score points with the uh, with the status quo or the millennials or the social justice weirdos out there that are looking for for woke points. Okay, for example, let's say I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a woke reboot of Three's Company. I'm going to have Andy Dick in um, John Ritter's part, okay? So it's going to be Andy Dick, and instead of living with two females, he's going to live with uh, two transgenders, all right? Three's Company. Three's Company 2019 or tw Three's Company 2020, all right? That's what it's going to be. So invent your woke reboot. Put them in the comments. This should be hilarious. It should be a lot of fun. And then a week from today... I'm going to read all of the uh, responses I got and, and do an update. Maybe I'll come up with something better than than what I just said. But uh, anyways, that's all I got to say about this. You know, uh, yeah, I franchise fatigue, I don't want to completely dismiss that. I mean, it would be nice to see something, anything original, but uh, everything is a reboot. And we're kind of conditioned to just expect it to be bad or woke or annoying or boring you know some some way they're going to basically you know just sterilize the content and make it a complete chore to watch so it's hard to get excited about these reboots when you're not bringing anything exciting to it i the last really good reboot i saw was it 2017 and i'm dying to see it chapter two you can do these things it's just you have to put some kind of heart and soul into this stuff you can't just make these design by committee and expect people to show up Anyways, that's enough for today. You guys have yourselves a groovy day, and this is the Groovinator signing out. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining. Please remember to depress that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you'll be the first to know when new content is published. Please visit RaidersOfLostFlicks.com for more hilarious entertainment and links to all of our social media platforms. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon. As little as a dollar a month supports our worldwide digs for more lost flicks. Thank you, and have a groovy day.